Hello, my name is Ryan and welcome to my channel, Radicals Fantasy Formula 1. Qatar is, uh, well, just a day away. Tomorrow night, Friday evening, I will be doing a sprint quality watch along where all the decisions will be made somewhat final. And then, of course, a deadline stream on Saturday. So do not miss those. Everything I discuss in this video will be um, before I've seen any cars on track. But I do have some suspicions and some theories and some predictions. We'll see if they come true and we'll see if the team I present today is going to be the team I present tomorrow. What is this video? Well, it's my Qatar team selection, of course. Now, before we get into that, I still want to remind you that you can still fill out the survey link in the description down below. I know surveys scary word but please fill it out it's about f1 fantasy and what you think about the game what you think the main uh, problems are with the game what you think is good with the game and the great thing about this is that like the actual f1 fantasy will look at the responses to this survey at the end of the year as part of their sort of season recap and take that the feedback that we give into account when they prepare for the game in 2025 so if you want your voice to be heard the survey in the link in the description is the best way to do it so please go and fill it out if you know what a, if you want to know what i think about the survey what i filled out in each of them i'll also leave a link in the description to the video i made about it so please fill it out if you haven't and let's get on to my team selection for the sprint weekend in qatar so if you've missed it i will briefly mention this bit of news uh because it has something to do with my it impacts my f1 fantasy team and that is that another host driver is potentially sick meaning that oli Behrman might be deployed again in qatar uh, as nico hulkenberg was not present at the sale for thursday's traditional activities uh we'll see what happens with that if he continues to be sick or if he actually races in the weekend but initially this makes me very hesitant to keep hulkenberg i talked previously in my transfer plans video that i would like to keep hulkenberg in one way or another but now i'm not so sure anymore uh, especially since it's a sprint weekend, we need him to be fit and ready to go tomorrow for the qualifying on Friday, because if Oli Behrman does the Friday uh, sprint qualifying, then Oli Behrman has to do the sprint race. You can't put Hulkenberg in the sprint race after uh, Oli Behrman has done the qualification, or the sprint qualification, rather. You can then switch it, meaning that I think, again, both Oli Behrman and Hulkenberg are non-options for this week. The F1 Fantasy uh, game has not put Oli Behrman into the game yet. Uh, speaking of things I won't change to the game, I think we should have the third drivers be available to buy at all times and maybe they shouldn't be you know handed a, a minus 20 every time because right now imagine you're sitting there and you want to take a punt on Oli Berman. you can't you have to wait uh until they change it I know it's it's changing every day and we might not know like Hulkenberg could be in the car tomorrow it's not confirmed but I think you should be able to go and buy Oli Berman if you wanted to today I don't know why you would do that not knowing if you would race or not but I think still think the the option of the assets should be there uh so they i think they knew they do need to figure something out for these uh reserve drivers for these inactive drivers so they don't just get a minus 20 every week but they're still not worth having because they can't dnf there is a a happy medium there i don't know what the happy medium is but i i think they do need to find it because having to wait for the game to put assets in and out when drivers are sick or have appendicitis is quite annoying and i especially for people who aren't like me and maybe you who check our teams every day they will miss stuff like that and then suddenly they're sitting there with nico holkenberg in their team even though he's not racing and get what minus 45 points or something like that because he he's not he doesn't race in the sprint and in the you know he gets two dnfs this weekend so holkenberg could could be on for a massive negative and even if it looks like he he's fine i i might be hesitant to keep him for this specific reason uh, which would allow me to do a lot of things with my team, right? Uh, with Hulkenberg, I can still afford, if you sort by value, I can still afford to just go straight up to Magnussen. So if I end up keeping Norris plus signs, I could just go straight to Kevin, and I think that's a good swap, right? Kevin uh, obviously did not have the greatest uh, time in Vegas, but he's been Mr. Consistent throughout the entire year, and I do believe that he could be one to really um, uh, make use of uh, a sprint weekend and get all the points in Qatar. 
you know, he could qualify poorly in the in the sprint race and then he could do well and, you know, climb some positions in the sprint and then do the same in the main race. So I think someone like Kevin Magnussen could be really, really good. Obviously, that requires me keeping Carlos Sainz, Landon Norris or keeping assets on that budget range. Uh, the problem is, though, that I might not want to do that. And this is my main plan. Not this, but what I'm about to show you is going to be my main plan going into this weekend because we're expecting McLaren to be fast. Now, do we have any real grounds for this other than what they did last year? Not really. You can't really look at last year's result. If you remember, uh, there were problems with the Pirelli tires last year. So there was a mandatory three stop involved, which made it so that all the drivers had to push like 100% the entire race because they, they were forced to pit after a certain amount of laps because they feared that the tires would give out. Like this track is really big on tire degradation and a team who's been really good on the tire deg throughout the year has been McLaren. McLaren is the team that's gotten better with tire dig. So if there's no sort of forcing drivers to do pit stops because they, you know, the tires can't handle more than X amount of laps, it's likely going to be maybe a two stopper, but I can see McLaren really improving later on in the stint when other teams might fall off in, su in a track where there is such high tire deg degradation. So for that reason, alongside you know the fact that you know we just expect McLaren to be fast here, uh, the the main team I'm looking at is to bring back Oscar Piastri for the triple up on uh, McLaren, and the main way to do that would be to downgrade this asset, the Nico Hulkenberg assets, because I can't downgrade Carl into or Bottas because they're the cheapest in their categories. I could also downgrade Ferrari to uh, Mercedes, and as such, you know, keep. Nico Hulkenberg there but even then I, I can't go back up to Kevin like I can just barely afford this team right and with the news of Nico Hulkenberg being sick I'm not so keen on keeping Hulkenberg anyway so for that reason I'm completely fine with downgrading Hulkenberg like the only way I, I, I might upgrade Hulkenberg to Kevin but I'm not keeping Nico Hulkenberg and in that case I can afford Yuki Tsunoda and Ferrari Yuki Tsunoda is the next driver priced below Hulkenberg at 11.4 million whereas Hulkenberg is at 12 million flat so the option right now or the main team I'm looking at is to switch Pia uh, switch Piastri in for signs or switch signs out for Piastri rather I, I, that's probably how you should say it and then go for whichever C tier driver below Hulkenberg in price that looks the best in the sprint qualifying because that's really all we can go for. Remember, you don't have to make your transfers before the sprint qualifying. You can look at the sprint qualifying and then you make the transfers before the sprint race on the Saturday. That's why we're doing two streams this weekend. One, uh, a watch along of the sprint, uh, of the sprint qualifying, and then one, a deadline stream for the sprint uh, race or before, you know, the, the, the F1 fantasy deadline, right? So... Being able to look at the sprint qualifying is completely broken. I hope it's not here next season, but that is the game we're playing right now. So just looking flat at who performed badly, really, or really, really well in the in the sprint quali is, uh, is going to be the metric that determines who will be my driver uh, alongside Oscar Piastri. If it is the case that we're expecting and McLaren are as fast as we're hoping or predicting them to be. Um, now, again, below Hulkenberg could be anyone. It could be Yuki. It could be Liam at 11 million. It could be Pierre Gasly at 10.8. It could be Albon at 8.7, etc. Uh, an important thing to note with Alex Albon specifically is that in the case where I go for Alex Albon, I can actually afford to upgrade Bottas to Shou Guan Yu. Now, uh, I don't know if that's optimal. I think yes. Uh, show has been better fantasy wise and track wise uh, recently I mean he, he had a really really good performance last time out in Vegas getting that p13 outscoring Bottas once again and I, he's just been a really really good f1 fantasy run right so I would definitely prefer to have him over Bottas now when we get to the final race of the season I could see myself wanting Bottas because if nothing special happens in the final race of the season it is possible that similarly to Daniel Ricciardo one of the drivers leaving the sport get driver of the day if they do something good so if we get a Bottas finishing p12 or p13 I know that sounds crazy but he, he, like Bottas is one of the drivers that are very 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 likely out of the sport in 2025 
and as such i can see him squeaking out a uh, squeezing out a driver of the day plus 10 bonus in the final race of the season so for that reason i might want to have bottas over shogun you in the final race but for this race in qatar especially since show i know he did well last time but in general and and definitely you know before vegas he is the driver to qualify p20 and doing so both in the sprint and in the main race gives him more routes to points and i mean we can just look at what he did what he did in the previous sprint races nine points here and six points here and uh, i mean bottas was not really close to that at all like he had uh, minus two points in brazil and only one point in cota so the the advantages of running albon is that i can upgrade bottas to show other than that like albon i spoke about albon a lot in my team uh, in my uh, transfer plans video that surely his horrible run has to end soon right you, but, but we really should not look at what's happening we should look at what's ahead of us because we can't chase points or we can't you know expect this to keep going i should look at albon for what he is as an asset he is very dnf prone right now but if we're going to be fair to him most of these were not his fault right most of these weren't his fault and considering what colapinto is doing albon does have the potential to bring a lot of points home we saw it in baku we saw it in kota and i mean look colapinto in vegas got 10 points starting from the back alex albon would have also started also did start quite far back and was on a decent was on for a decent haul before he once again uh, had that dnf like he'd already had four overtakes if he had finished higher than he started I believe he started 17th, right? Because he got moved up one place when Colapinto got moved into the pit lane. So if he had finished the race, I don't know where he would have been. Maybe P14, P13, somewhere around Shogun Yu and where Colapinto was. Maybe even ahead of them, right? So maybe he would have been the one in P13. And in that case, he would have had an additional plus four points. Maybe an additional overtake sometime later on in the race. And he would have finished on a 10-point haul. So I think Albon had, does have the potential to be good. But again, if one DNF happens, either like in a qualifying session, I don't know how many parts Williams has. So it's obviously a big risk because if he crashes in the sprint, I don't think he starts the race, right? I mean, at some point, Williams has to just stop the bleeding. They have, what is it, like $11 million in damages, like structural damage this season. That is monstrous. Like, I believe the highest last year was also Williams with like 6 million. So they've nearly doubled their damage total uh, or their damage bill this year already. So it's obviously a risk to go for Albon. And again, I won't go for Albon unless Albon starts far back after the sprint qualifying, right? So uh, this is an option for me to to do that. And it's, by the way, it's the only way I can upgrade Bottas is if I go for Albon and show. Uh, but again, more likely is that, you know, I just, I just spot someone like a, I don't know, a Liam Lawson missing out in, in sprint qualifying one, maybe there's a yellow flag or he just has a poor lap, makes a mistake and, and starts in, in P18 in the sprint. Yuki puts a P, P9, P10, and there's definitely potential in the RB car. Maybe Liam Lawson is the one to come into my team. I keep Bottas. I get Piastri in. I call it a day. So I, the team like this is my most likely team that I will run. To, specifically to protect myself from the 3x users. Reminder, I have no chips remaining. And I believe a lot of people are going to use chips in Qatar. So I'm not expecting that arrow below me to be blue. Uh, when you when you see my next video on, on Monday or Tuesday. I, I, I think it's going to be red. I'm just hoping to limit how red it is, right? Uh, hoping that it's at least only three digits and I can stay within uh, the top 10k. As for other teams, specifically like Ferrari teams, Mercedes teams, um, I don't think I'm getting Max in, even if Max does look good. I, I don't think I can at my budget for it to really make sense. It's also too many transfers. I would have to keep Holkenberg, but I would probably have to downgrade Holkenberg to afford a team like that. So for my budget, my team, I don't think Max is uh, an option. The, the options I have really, considering I do want to get rid of Holkenberg with uh, one of my three free transfers, is more something like, oh, maybe Ferrari look really good and I want to change it. And in those cases where I downgrade Norris and keep signs, like downgrade Norris to Leclerc, keep signs, run triple Ferrari, then I can upgrade Bottas much, much easier without 
you know breaking the bank really so uh let's sort it by budget here again let's get yuka node in here uh and then we can do alex albon in there so it would be have to be alex albon I, I i cannot afford to go up to uh to appear or or liam lawson i'm actually 0.3 million away from this um but uh you know in this in this case i couldn't do mclaren to mercedes because that would be four transfers obviously so it would it would be Alex Albon as well. That would be my upgrade. Or again, maybe it's so show on you. Uh, they're the same price essentially, uh, eight point six and, and eight point seven million. So in any case where I don't keep or don't go for the triple McLaren, I can very very likely upgrade Bottas to show or Albon anyway, uh, just because of the budget I save by going without Norris. I'm not so likely to do that. I would have to see something crazy in free practice and in the sprint qualifying to end up going for that but it is possible like i do have three transfers it is definitely possible that i do go for that uh, especially if there's something similar to what happened last year where the tire dig is too high and they get limited by pirelli and forced into a three stop in that case i do think someone like uh ferrari or mercedes could be uh could be way better uh for mercedes if we're talking mercedes teams it's likely Mercedes plus McLaren teams. Uh, it would be too much to switch out three assets and then upgrading, right? I would have to do this, 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 and this to get a, like a solid uh, Mercedes team. And then I'm also keeping Hulkenberg in here. Uh, mainly, I'm talking about, like, if I go to my Mercedes team, I also want to upgrade my other assets. Like, that's the main power of Mercedes-based teams. So, for me, a Mercedes-based team would be, and it would definitely be George Russell over Hamilton. He's way cheaper and has outperformed Hamilton recently, you have to say it. Even though Hamilton is doing these amazing recovery drives, I think George Russell is the, you know, is the one you go for. Uh, in that case, you know, I obviously go for Mercedes, double up here. And then, in that case, I could go either just straight upgrade uh, Bottas to Shogun Yu or uh, Alex Albon if I want to keep um, uh, Hulkenberg, right? But I'm more likely in this case to go for K-Mag uh, to, you know, remove the risk of Hulkenberg if, if Hulkenberg does look like a risk. So in the instance where Ferrari don't look good or maybe I don't, you know, I don't want to fully trust McLaren uh, and Mercedes look decent again, this could be a team I go for. Again, that's one, two, three transfers. So uh, some options, but again, the most likely outcome uh, of this uh, deadline stream on Saturday is that I end up going back to the triple uh, McLaren team and downgrading to... I'm just going to put uh, Yuki Sonoda in there for now, but know that that could be anyone and whoever it ends up being, it's dependent on the sprint qualifying tomorrow evening. So don't miss the sprint qualifying look at it watch it and then make your decision with me at the deadline stream or just pop in here to the channel tomorrow after the sprint qualifying or if you want to watch the sprint qualifying with me i will be live as soon as the sprint qualifying start i will be live doing the watch along reacting to the, the the craziness of the sprint qualifying and then we'll discuss you know which assets look the best and what everything means and and all of that good stuff so join me for that do not miss it I will see you tomorrow and for the deadline stream on Saturday. Uh, the actual like streams should be up on the channel very, very soon. So you can click on the little notification button on that. But if you don't want to miss it, subscribe if you haven't. Uh, it would mean a lot to me. And don't forget to do the survey. I'll see you tomorrow and on Saturday. And likely on Monday or Tuesday as well. A lot of videos, a lot of things happening on the channel. Goodbye.